This is the Lexus ES 300H and it was launched by Lexus, that's Toyota's luxury arm if you weren't aware, back in 1989. So it's been around quite a while. In actual fact, this is the generation seven facelifted version. So it stood the test of time and it's obviously very, very popular. The car itself, ES, stands for Executive Sedan in America. Over here in Europe or in the UK, we call it an Executive Saloon. And the H at the end stands for Hybrid because this car does have a full fat hybrid attached to it. The car's won awards for its build quality, its comfort, and it's been the best selling Lexus sedan for the last 15 years in the States. So it's got a lot to live up to here in Europe because it's only recently been introduced into the UK and Europe. We're going to get around it, we're going to have a look at it and see what we think of the latest Lexus ES300H. You're watching me, AJ, on the Player YouTube channel. If you haven't seen what we do before, then feast your eyes for the next minute and a half on our little trailer video. And straight after that, we'll crack on with a review. This is how a car should sound. Listen to this. With the Lexus ES300H, you get a choice of four different trim levels. Your entry level car is called the Premium, and that starts at around 40,000 UK pounds. Now, if you want the top of the range or kitchen sink level, as I like to call it, it's called the Takumi, and it will set you back from 56,000 UK pounds. There are nine different color choices to choose from, nine different paint choices, and you've got to admit, this blue is absolutely stunning. Look at it. Uh, special metallics will cost you an extra 250 UK pounds. Just thought I'd mention that. Interior-wise, four different choices on your interior. Different colorways, different ways, different leathers, things like that. Check with that when you get down to your Lexus showroom to have a test drive, and they'll tell you all about those choices. Um, Entry-level cars. Well, entry-level cars come pretty loaded. They start with 18-inch alloys, like these black ones here. I think, again, simply beautiful. You get a full set of LEDs at the front. You've got your running light, you've got your main beam, your side beam, and then you've got your indicator as well, and you've got fog lights on this. And with this car, with the entry-level car, you do get auto dip beam as well. So when you come up behind a car, or a car's coming towards you and you're in the full beam, it's gonna automatically detect that and shut it down for you. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Rain sensing wipers, foldy any mirrors that heat up in the winter. Brilliant when you're parking or you're going through a car wash. And round at the back here, you get privacy glass all the way round. You get a full set of LEDs these at the back and when it comes to safety even on the entry level car you get a beautiful uh, camera system with a cross traffic alert built into it so when you're reversing out of a parking space or you're simply you know reversing around a corner or something like that it will detect cars coming or pedestrians or anything like that and actually it can auto brake for you as well it's got the blind spot monitoring system on here as well as standard on your entry level car you get a brilliant 12.3 inch tft touchscreen that encompasses all those bits and pieces I simply love that and just to top it all you get one of the most spectacular sound systems in this car so it's all really stacking up even on the entry-level ES300H 
Right, it's about to rain. It's typical British summertime here in the UK. So let's crack on this pretty quick because otherwise you're gonna watch me get very, very wet. Um, bonnet release catch, enough waffling by the way, down here, just in the driver's footwell. It's a single pull. Don't forget, if you're driving a left-hand drive version of this car, it's gonna be in the passenger footwell because they're not gonna swap it around. It costs too much money. Um, the actual bonnet release catch is just here, in dead center. If you look at the logo, work your way up, put your finger down inside. You'll feel the little catch in there pull it to the left and let the gas struts do the work. Because don't forget guys, this is a Lexus. It's a premium product. It's gonna have all the nice little bits like that where you're not having to put the effort in. That's what I like. One engine choice with this car. It's a two and a half litre four cylinder petrol engine but it's linked up to a hybrid system with two motors and a battery, which all combined will give you 215 brake horsepower. 0 to 60 times, well, they're not gonna light up any fireworks. You're talking around about eight to nine seconds. Top speed are around about 118, 120 miles an hour. But one of the biggest drawbacks with this car, in my opinion, is the transmission that it comes with. There's only one transmission available. It's called a CVT, Continual Variable Transmission. I hate them. It's just something about they just do not tick my boxes, trust me. They don't have any gears. So basically what you've got is a big wheel with a rubber band going around it. This is very basic layman's terms. And as you accelerate, that elongates and changes. So there's an infinite number of gears. And as you decelerate, it slackens back again. But it's that sort of movement of going backwards and forwards. And it makes a noise. It's like, and I just can't get on with it. However, and there is a big however with this car, it's not actually that bad on this car, it's quite good. They even give you a sports setting for your transmission on the, on the gearbox settings in the, in the car, and, and it's manual because you can go on the paddles and they've got virtual gears, and it really works. It actually works. It's still a bit sluggish. It still makes the noise, but it's nowhere near as bad as what some of the others I've driven, trust me. So it's actually passing the test. But where it really nails it, this car, where it absolutely zings it out of the planet is on the fuel economy, because this engine is producing diesel-like miles per gallon. We are talking 48 miles to the gallon plus with a two and a half litre petrol engine. Simply stunning. Let's check out around the back of the uh, ES300H. And in my opinion, it's got a lovely, sexy bum to it, hasn't it? It's really nice. It's quite sporty, but at the same time, it sort of oozes a bit of charisma, a bit of power about it. I love this long, sweeping rear screen. It's great when you're reversing or if you're manoeuvring the car. Don't forget to get the privacy glass, even with the entry-level car. Got your DAB radio aerial up there on the back, that shark fin that I love. Got some aero going on here as well. You've got the split LED tail lights. You've got your Lexus badge, your ES300 badge. No fakery about it, no big fat exhaust anywhere it just looks the part now there's no button to actually open the boot but you get it on your key you can push like that and hold the button and it will pop open automatically really nice inside very plush very finished you know premium quality yet again inside there 450 litres of boot space it's pretty big it's going to take quite a lot not as much as some of the competition but big enough for your everyday needs for your shopping to get some suitcases in there now underneath here you've got a little place you can lift up there inside here you can have a spare wheel with this car do me a favor don't get the um, the rubber solution and the pump it doesn't work guys it's a waste of money get yourself a spare wheel in there be perfect this car actually comes with a jack an old-fashioned jack look at that so you can jack this car up and change the wheel using a brace i haven't seen one of these for a long time i'm loving it it's proper old school um but as i say don't bother with the latex and the pump it's completely useless so all in all looks nice practical does the job doesn't it Let's check it out in the back for the passengers, see what it's like, whether it's comfortable, what it's like to get in and out. And straight away, I can tell you, if you're looking here, look at the size of this area here. Absolutely incredible for getting baby seats in and out. You know, you've got the rake on the door here. It's going to allow you to turn those in very easily. Also getting elderly or aged people in and out. It's quite a low profile here. Easy to swing your legs out and help your mother-in-law out or your father or whatever. Um, also, I've noticed putting the baby seat in, obviously you've got the isofix points in here to access the isofix points you do have the removable plastic covers um, not over keen on them because they do tend to get lost or chewed up by 
uh, children or whatever, you might end up having to buy another set of those. So just bear that in mind. Uh, but a nice finish nonetheless. Recessed seat belts as well, really good. I also want to point out, I'm going to jump in the car, show you how easy it is to get in and out of this car. There you go, how simple is that? Absolutely beautiful, loads of, believe it or not, headroom. I was, I was really shocked, I didn't think there was gonna be enough headroom in here. Um, but this window here, it's massive, is one, I'm gonna pull it in so you can see it. It's absolutely huge across there and it goes all the way down. I've noticed recently so many manufacturers are producing cars and there's like a massive gap where the window won't go down. Now, if you suffer from car sickness, you know, and, and you've got that and you wanna get your head out there and get some air in or whatever, it's not gonna help with it not going all the way down. Well done, Lexus, absolutely brilliant, all the way down. It gives you a much better feeling. And also that height as well. If you look at the height of it here, you see it's well below my shoulder. So I'm gonna sit here being able to look out. I've got plenty of view. And if I suffer from any car sickness, it's gonna cure it, absolutely. I, I like things like that, just little, little bits and pieces. Another thing I really like is the fact that you get independent air in the back here. So you can adjust that accordingly. I think, um, on, I know this is, this is the F Sport model, so it's getting up there, it's not the top of the range, but it would have been nice to have tri-zone climate control in here. It's a premium quality product, even on the entry level. Did a, a review on a Cupra the other week, a, um, I can't call it a Seat Cupra anymore, uh, a Cupra, and that actually had tri-zone climate control, and it was a lot less money than this. I think it's, you know, it's kind of like, it's, it's, it's given these days. If you're buying a car of this quality, I'd expect that. But you do get the air control nonetheless. Below that, you've got a 12 volt adapter as well, so you can plug into that, and two USB-Cs. So there's plenty to charge in the back for any of the, if the kids are in here for the peripherals, or if you're driving someone around, and I need to plug in, you're gonna get that. Low transmission tunnel there. I've got to say, you know, definitely, definitely five car seat, this, look at that. I mean, that is beautiful. And the seats, again, absolutely stunningly bolstered. Um, but at the end of the day, Toyota, Lexus, they make a really good proper driving seat. So the passenger seats are nonetheless uncomfortable. I love the leather finish in this particular car. It's really nice. You've got a poppy forwardy bit here that you can pop bits inside there and, and tuck them away. The seats are a really nice shape as well. Loads of height in here. Now in old money, I'm five foot 10 and a half, Lenny five foot 11, uh, 176 centimeters for you modern people. Um, you can see there's plenty of height in here for me. You get a LED uh, courtesy light in here. Another thing in the center here, um, you've got the armor which is really nice but you will notice if I pop the button there you get a double cup holder at the front there now, the reason I like this if you look at the shape of that cup holder that is designed so when there's a hot cup of coffee in there if someone breaks if the driver breaks really fast that's not going to go flying forward it's not going to shoot out because it's high up and the cup sits inside it brilliant design yet again a little bit of forethought i like that there's a place here to put knickknacks or whatever you want you can pop that up inside here got another glove box in there as well lovely really well thought out all this and on top of that you've got a lockable yes a lockable which i found quite amazing little ski hatch to put bits and pieces in here. Now, if you're in the UK, we don't call it a ski hatch, as you know when I do these reviews. This is called the B&Q hatch. Oh yes, because if a car can't take wood, <laughs> I have to be careful how I say this. When you pop down to the DIY store, then a car's not worth having a ski hatch because here in the UK, we don't do a lot of skiing, um, but we use it for going down the DIY store. And this would be perfect for putting lengths of wood in there. So as I said, if a car can't give you wood, it's not worth investing in. Um, I'm gonna pop that back up. It's got a lock on it as well to stop people getting in from here. Can't quite understand why you would wanna lock your ski hatch, but there you go, nonetheless, you can lock it. I'll pop it back up. Good quality premium finish to it, loads of leg room, loads of space to put your feet underneath. I could spend a couple of hours in the back here easily, but what I much prefer is sitting up front in the driver's seat. Up front for the driver in the Lexus ES300H, well, I mean, it doesn't get much better. Just look at this. The seat is in the position for getting out and getting into the car. Uh, with all Lexuses, the seat moves back when you turn the ignition off, allows you easy access. I really love that. So keyless entry and keyless ignition. So when we put my foot on the uh, brake there and I push the start button, which is just over there, you'll see automatically it moves into my driving position. It's got some memory buttons over here as well that you can preset. So if there's two or three different people driving this car, you'll always have your own button to set. But primarily, this 
this is set up in my driving position will always give you the easy access when you pull up. Um, sounds like a very good friend of mine from Holland. Uh, let's crack on. Steering wheel, I really love the steering wheel. Beautiful, nice and easy to, electronically adjusted, nice and easily to adjust here, up and down, loads of scope, don't matter how tall you are, how short you are, you're gonna get this in the perfect position. I'm gonna put these uh, keys down before I bang them around. Eight-way adjustable seat on this. Um, simply love it, so well bolstered, really comfortable. I've become used to this with Toyota and Lexus. I mean, they produce a fantastic seat. You could just drive for hours in this. Um, and again, like I say, with the wheel, it's just really nicely positioned there. Um, Right-hand side of the wheel, you've got all your driver controls. Now, your driver controls, you've got cruise control, you've got your speed limiter, you can stop and set your uh, resume and, and reset on your cruise control there you've got your lane keepy distance control mode button on there as well and then to the left hand side you've got the scroll system here scroll buttons that you can use to change the cluster so you can scroll through your trip computer on the cluster you can change different bits and pieces as you're driving along give you a fuel economy readout and things like that that's all controlled on the left hand side there um, you've also got telephone control on here got volume control for your tunes down the bottom then and you've got an ask lexus button on the bottom left so if you're driving along and you're getting a little bit low on petrol or you want to fancy a burger or a milkshake or something just push that button speak to ask whatever Lex, uh, Lexa I was going to say Lexus and uh, it will direct you to the nearest place R really handy I quite like having that or it can tune into the radio station of your choice as well which I found out earlier 12.3 um, inch TFT touchscreen that incorporates an analog clock I love an analog clock that's so nice it's really old school I really like that you've got your sat nav built into there buttons separate buttons guys now come on it might be a tft but i love a separate button so we can actually set up the air con when you get in here with gloves on you've got wet hands or it's cold you know it's going to be so much easier to push the buttons and set your heating up or your air conditioning a lot easier and then below that some little push buttons for your radio your media and your track change and things like that again really lovely heated front seats his and hers his and his hers and hers whatever you want um, also with an auto setting a three-way with an auto setting so they will actually sense when they need to come on when it gets a little bit cold around your posterior so to speak and they'll automatically come on you get a heated steering wheel a heated steering wheel button in there that's also on an auto as well so that'll also sense when it gets a little bit cold and you need your hand is warming up it's perfect double cup holder in the center here um, and then just next to that you've got the two usb adapters here you've got a standard usb and a USB C. you just pull the little flat back like that and that nice that i'll pull that back and then just everything's like soft touch it's really nice you've got a wireless charger here as well um a little bit obtrusive i think in the middle there when you actually put a phone on it is but it's there and it's easy to access as well which is nice so i like that um now you've got to see this is uh, what i call the pièce de la résistance in the front here uh, the glove box the central cubby here really nice but you'll notice i've opened it so now if you're the passenger, I mean, it's, it's huge. You get tons in here and it's got two USB-Cs in here and a 12 volt adapter. But if you're the passenger, how do you access that? You're gonna to have to put your arm over. It's gonna be really difficult. No, watch this. Look at that. How nice is that? Look at that, it's two way. Oh my God, that's design. That is beautiful design. Whoever designed that at Lexus, I take my hat off to you, sir or madam. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. It doesn't stop there either. You've got a glove box over here. You push the button, soft open glove box. How nice is that? I've got to do that one more time as well. Beautiful, love it. Decent sized glove box. I mean, setting up here, you've got your mode buttons up here. So you've got different modes. And let's talk about that when we get it out on the road. You've got your traction control button over here. Just everything is geared up for a driver and so nice and easy to get to. There's no flaffing around. There's no silly, you know, mucking around with screens to turn the volume up and stuff. The volume's here. You can turn that up. I've got the tunes on. Beautiful sound system in this car. I mentioned even with the entry level, you get this amazing surround sound system in here. Um, I'm loving this car, but I need to get it out on the road and see if it actually drives as good as it feels to sit in, as good as it looks. So let's go do it. Out on the road in the Lexus ES 300H, the first thing you're going to notice is how quiet it is. I mean, it's superbly quiet in here. Um, you could almost have a sleep in the back if someone else was driving. It's really nice. The comfort factor in this car as well. Um, you can see why it's won awards for its comfort. It just handles everything so effortlessly. 
Um, it's, it's incredible. You've got that really lovely soft damper when you want it. Um, and then when you, you start to accelerate a little bit, things slightly change, you get a good feeling. I love, believe it or not, I actually love the fact that you've got virtual gears in this car. It is a CVT. I'm not a big lover of the CVT. You know that if you've watched me before. Um, it's, but putting it into the manual and using the paddles in the virtual gears, it can actually be quite a bit of fun. I'm quite shocked. Good all-round peripheral vision. Really, really good. Lovely big windshield on this car as well. Great depth as well. You can see straight down the bonnet. Brilliant seat adjustment. I've got to say that. Really comfortable seats. But you're not going to expect anything less from a Toyota Lexus brand, are you? You know that those seats that you get in a Toyota, that you get in a Lexus, they're just stunning. These are eight-way electrical seats. Um, and you can just set it up the way you want. They've got auto sensing on your seat heating as well. I really like that. You've got the uh, heated steering wheel as well for in the winter. Get your gloves off, get your hands on the steering wheel, warms your little mitts up. Oh, so nice. Another thing I love about this car, it comes standard with blind spot detection on the mirrors. Um, I think that's you know essential in today's modern drive. You've got to have these little bits and pieces. Okay, the heated seats and the heated steering wheel, a little bit extra bits, nice bits and pieces, but that's the luxury side of Toyota. That's the Lexus brand coming into its own, where it, you know it sort of engages all those lovely little bits and pieces and gives you those for the money that you're paying for this car. What's it like to drive? It's really nice. What's it like on economy? Well, let's check. Your trip computer can be accessed here on the left-hand side of the steering wheel. Comes up in the center dial there. And if you scroll through, um, I'm getting the tire pressures are coming up. Um, I'm getting the mileage, average mileage. And we are currently getting 44.7 miles to the gallon. Now that, in my books, is diesel engine territory. That's, that's way more than petrol engine territory. Um, we're talking like, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed guys, you can probably tell. I think that's stunning for a petrol engine, a two and a half litre petrol engine, 44.7. That's around these roads with me properly testing this car. I mean, we don't drive it, you know, we drive it properly. So we're giving it some beans, we're testing it out. That's that's our job, that's what we do. Whereas if it's your car, you know, at the end of the day, you're gonna be a little bit more frugal with it. You're gonna make sure you're getting, you know, more bang for your buck on the mileage. So I think you're gonna easily see 45 plus for this when you're on a run. You set that into your cruise control, you get out on the run easily. I think, you know, 70 mile an hour, down the motorway, a couple of hours, incredible stuff so that's where this car is definitely scoring um, also you've got all these lovely uh, driver aids as standard as well you've got lane keeper you've got distance control you've got the cruise control you've got the speed limiter sign recognition you've got the tire pressure monitor this car's just literally ram packed full um, you've got all the nice bits around you everything's within easy reach i like the tft touchscreen i love the digital cluster here yeah, just simply, what a great car to drive. Uh, modes on this car, so you've got um, you've got the standard mode, you've got the eco mode, and then you've got sport, and you've got sport plus in this car. That's accessed up here, just next to the the cluster here on the instrument panel. There's a button up there. You just turn it, rotate it forward, down, or up, and that will change the mode on this car. Now the modes do. You can stiffen up the suspension when you get into the sport section. Um, and Sports Plus, obviously, you've got to watch it because it turns off the traction control. You can manually turn off the traction control on the right-hand side. There's a button up there for that as well. Um, not that I would ever see any reason why you would want to turn the traction control off, but hey-ho, it's there if you need it. Everything's to hand. You've got a lovely climate control in here as well. Um, it's, just, it's just a super car to drive. And uh, I, I really cannot fault the Lexus. Um, I was hoping I'd find something wrong with it, but I couldn't. Let's get on with the summary and see what we finally think of the Lexus ES300H. So there you have it guys, the Lexus ES300H. What a car. I have totally, totally enjoyed test driving this car for the last week. And I suggest, in my honest opinion, get down and give one a test drive. Get down to your local Lexus Toyota showroom and get someone to let you get out in it, get it on the road and make your own opinion of this car. Because I think it does tick the boxes in almost every department, but is it for you? 
at the end of the day, that is down to you. That's a personal choice. One thing I can tell you with this car, you get a decent warranty as well. You will get Lexus's three year or 60,000 mile warranty, whichever comes first. On top of that, you get a 12 year anti-perforation warranty for any rusty bits underneath that might occur. Not that I think there would ever be any rusty bits on a car of this build quality. At the same time, you get three years paintwork cover as well. So that'll cover that beautiful paintwork. You get full roadside assistance as well from the minute you drive off the forecourt. And don't forget, this has a battery. So there is a five year or 60,000 mile warranty on your battery because it's a hybrid. So you've got a hybrid battery warranty there as well. Also, another thing to mention is if you sell the car within the, within the periods of any of the warranties, you can just transfer it on to the new owner. All nice and simple and easy. In addition, one final thing to say is if you get this car serviced by a main dealer, a main Lexus dealer, you can increase that warranty up to 10 years or 100,000 miles, whichever comes first. Enough said, guys. I think you need to get down and give one a test drive and see if it's for you. Thanks for watching. You've been watching me, AJ, on the Player YouTube channel. Don't forget, like, subscribe, and comment. If you've got any questions about the car or you've got your own experience about this car that you would like to add in for other people watching this review, then put it in the comment box down below and one of us will get back to you or someone else watching it will comment back to you as well and we can get a conversation going about the Lexus ES300H. That could be interesting as well. If you want to subscribe, there is a subscribe button. Leave the bell sign unchecked because as you saw at the beginning of this video, we do far more than just car reviews. And there may be other things and bits and pieces as we're doing at least one or maybe two videos a week. You might get informed and go, you know what, I fancy watching AJ doing that silly boat or sitting in that helicopter or whatever he's doing. So leave the bell sign unchecked and you'll get regular updates. One last thing I'm gonna ask, but I'm gonna do something for a favor and a favor in return. If you wouldn't mind giving us a thumbs up, I'd really, really appreciate it. It's not just me who produces these videos. There's a crew and there's also an editing crew as well. So between us about seven or eight of us in total that produce these videos um, we put a lot of effort into it I know it's our job but at the end of the day if we get a thumbs up it does make the bosses happy and it keeps the sponsors happy as well it keeps us doing this and keeps us all in a job which I'd really appreciate so give us a thumbs up if you get the opportunity in return for that as I said a favor for a favor I'm going to offer you something that is literally for free it's called the player the player bookazine um, it's, it's a hardback magazine that comes out on the period, well, it's, it's a hardback book that comes out on the period of a magazine. So it's quite frequent every few months. Um, it's 220 pages. It's called The Player, guys. It is simply stunning. It's got everything in here that us guys absolutely love. There's like cars, there's boats, there's jet skis, there's helicopters, there's flying, there's interviews, there's golf, there's food, there's everything, you know, it's just totally a big guy's bookazine. There you go. And you can have that. You can't actually have the physical copy because they're 100 UK pounds each. You can if you want to subscribe. That's absolutely fine. I'm sure the owners would be more than happy. But however, by watching us on the Player YouTube channel, you can get a free online version, which is exactly the same as the physical version. So it's no different. And you, all you've got to do is just head over to www.theplayer.co.uk. Editor, please. Thank you very much. There you go, it's coming down the bottom there. Um, memorize that, I'll leave it up for a few seconds. Head over there and no big forms guys, no credit cards, nothing, no data capture, just a name, an email, and you can have full access to that 220 pages of the player. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next week, hopefully with something equally as exciting and beautiful as the Lexus ES300H. See you then.